I've reviewed quite a number of DAC boards, also known as sound cards for the Raspberry Pi, but this one is quite different, for it also has a display, transport buttons, a rotary volume control and can even play and rip CDs using an optical USB drive. And it comes with an infrared remote control. The NanoSound DAC2 comes in three flavors, Basic, Standard and Pro. The Basic has no display but can be upgraded later on by soldering a separately available display. The Standard version has a 1.3 inch OLED display that will show only text and the Pro version has a 1.5 inch OLED color display that also shows cover art. The display is not necessary since the NanoSound uses Volumio software that is controlled from a smartphone, tablet or computer. That doesn't mean that it's not nice to see what music is playing directly on the streamer. Furthermore, playing CDs from a USB optical drive and upsampling of these CDs is only standard on the Pro version. The other two versions can be upgraded for little money. At an extra charge there is also a USB optical drive and a plastic housing available. A file to print that housing yourself using a 3D printer is available for free. Furthermore, there is an amp available that does 2 times 24 milliwatts in 20 ohms for the headphones and 2 times 3 watts in 4 ohms for loudspeakers. This comes at an extra charge. The review sample came without the housing and amps but with the infrared remote and a Sony optical drive. You also need a Raspberry Pi micro SD card and power supply. The NanoSound DAC2 is then mounted on the Raspberry Pi. The current model, the 3B Plus, is more than sufficient. The NanoSound DAC2 is a streamer and thus a digital source. Normally it needs to be connected to your home network, although it can work without being connected to the network, on which later on more. The analog output should be connected to an amp and speakers or di directly to analog inputs of active speakers if you happen to have those. The amp could be the nano sound amp but is limited with 2 times 3 watts. An external hard disk that holds music can be connected to one of the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. If you have music on a computer or NAS, the DAC2 can play that too. You control the Volumio software by using a smartphone, tablet or computer by opening your internet browser and go to volumio.local. Also see the Volumio 2 review. The included infrared remote handles primary functions like play, pause, skip, repeat, random play and volume. The Volumio software is upgraded by two plugins, one that makes the infrared sensor, buttons and screen active and one that interfaces with the optical drive to play or even rip music. The music from the CD can also be upsampled to 176.4 kHz. The complete player, excluding the optional housing, measures 87 by 80 by 45 mm. The top or front, depending on how you place it, holds a true power button that prevents corruption of the micro SD card, the 1.5 inch OLED screen, a rotary encoder that functions as a volume control, two buttons for next and previous tracks, a play pause button and a button of which the function is not clear to me, the infrared sensor and the analog outputs on RCA. The underside shows audio grade quality components. A tiny microprocessor controls the DAC2. Furthermore, Omron relays, two crystal oscillators, one for 44.1 and one for 48 kHz base sampling frequencies, WEMA capacitors, and a Texas Instruments PCM5122 DAC chip very close to the crystal oscillators as we like it. The power supply should be connected to this micro USB port or to the Raspberry Pi. Connecting two separate power supplies is possible too. The DAC2 automatically senses what the powering scheme is. The software is Volumio 2, which I reviewed earlier. 
please watch that review for a complete picture of Lumia. In short, it's a music player that is rather versatile and is also used by brands like Project and Bryston. When started up the first time, it asks you a number of questions after which you are ready to play. You can play music from streaming services like Spotify, from an attached USB storage medium, from a share on your computer or NAS, or from any DLA server. There are several web radio plugins like TuneIn where you can select internet radio stations from all over the world. When you connect an optical USB drive and insert a CD, two new menu of options become available. Nanosound CD and Audio CD. The first is the preferred choice since it offers upsampling to 176.4 kHz and that improves the sound quality clearly. Obviously the reconstruction filter of the DAC2 is simpler than the Nanosound upsampling algorithm. You can even have the program rip the CD to the internal memory or to a USB drive. This is not yet fully functional for it starts ripping before the metadata has been looked up. If you just play the CD, the metadata is shown correctly. If you have a player that supports Apple AirPlay, that will work too. When the Raspberry Pi is connected to your network over cable, the Wi-Fi radio on the Pi can function as an access point. Just select the Lumio Wi-Fi channel and you can play music directly from, for instance, your iPhone. When not using AirPlay, all music up to 192 kHz PCM and DSD 256 are supported, which means that DSD is converted to PCM since the DAC chip used only supports PCM. No problem though, given the quality of the player and the conversion. MQA is not supported. Using the cheap switching mode power supply that normally powers the Raspberry Pis, connected to the Raspberry Pi doesn't make me very happy. It gets better when that power supply is connected to the DAC2 board. But using the Audiophonics linear power supply or the iFi Audio iPower switching mode power supply for the DAC2 and the cheap power supply for the Raspberry Pi is the way to go if sound quality is your thing. It then ranks in my setup 3 somewhere halfway where we also find the Sonos Connect. The DAC2 Pro, as reviewed here, costs around 200 euros. The Sony optical drive is just below 50 euros. At 59 euros for an iFi iPower and about 40 euros for the housing and you end up at about the same price as the Sonos. The Sonos is better in multi-room but only plays files up to 48 kHz and can't play or rip CDs. If you're digiphobe, the Sonos might be a better solution for some computer handiness does make living with the Nanosound DAC2 easier. You don't need to be a Linux expert though and it's a fun product for the study or garage if you're an audio gourmand. That's it for this week. There will be another video next Friday as always at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you'll be warned when new videos are out. If you like this video give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the And whatever you do, enjoy the music.